No, no, why not? As I said, I was going. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Bro, stop patronising me with your rubbish. You're crazy, man. You're no, I'm just talking with you. Point, then he's gonna continue. Right, so go on, okay. and then I'll reply to your As point, I and then I'll go. In the Balkans, in the Balkans. Yes. The Ottoman Islamic Caliphate yes. was a Muslim minority state in the yes. Balkans yes. up until the 19th century. The persecuted One Christians. Up until the 19th century. Yes, the persecuted Christians. Just like Christians. in Mughal Empire, where the Muslims were a minority. They, they 19th century. Christians. There were tens of millions of Muslims yeah. still in the Balkans. Yeah. No one was forced to convert. The churches are all there. Yeah. What happened to all the synagogues and other places in Andalusia? So, so what, was, what we've heard is Here's our history you're, attempting, the churches you're attempting are there. to justify the churches are there. Bearing in mind that you came into this conversation because you said you were going to give me an example yes. of a tolerant, benevolent Islamic no, caliphate. That's your yes. And the no, one no, example no, no, no. that we you stand gave. By that. No, one second. Stand by that. One we second. Stand by that. One second. Yes. And the example that you gave was a supremacist caliphate. I'm going soon. Was a supremacist well, I, I, caliphate. My, my field is Don't history. My, my, Don't interrupt, Adnan. Yes, I won't, I won't. Don't interrupt, Adnan. My Adnan. field is history. Don't interrupt, You're welcome Adnan. to talk to me. Don't interrupt, Adnan. I'm happy to talk Don't to you. Don't interrupt, Adnan. No interruption. So the example that this apologist gave, the example calm, calm that this man gave, calm, calm who when we spoke the mic is there. about shouting. Islamic conquests of Christian You're lands, shouting unnecessarily. said, Alhamdulillah. In other words, thanks be to God that Muslims invaded Christian land. Well done, supremacist. Well done, supremacist. Now, what happened when those caliphates dominated those Christian lands? They suppressed our customs. They suppressed our religion. They forbid Muslims to accept our religion. They forbid Christians to evangelize to Muslims. They restricted the practice of our faith. They imposed upon us a protection racket called the jizya. Any references? No, yes. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Yes. yes, yes. Let him bring the references out. I'm going to give a reference. Now we're, now we're talking, we're talking. Bob is not going to stay and talk to me. No, I'm going to make, answer this question and then and I'm going to go. run away. Run away. No, no, no. This is not, this is I not said fair. I was going ages ago. I'm going to stand here till the sun goes down. And we have another, uh, an hour and a half. I'm willing to stand by all these things Bob is claiming and I'm going to refute every single one of them yeah, with evidence right. and substance. Uh -huh. Let's see. Uh-huh. You want to stay? Uh-huh. <laughs> you want to stay instead of him? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> One second, Adnan. One second, he's going to Fox News on Wikipedia. He'll be back soon. He'll be back soon. Give me some of that action. I will stay. I, I'm here to stay. Yeah, yeah. Every please, please. single claim these Christian missionaries will bring, we will, we will rebut it with evidence and substance, unlike them. Now he's going on an Islamophobic website looking for... He's going to look a fool in a minute. Yeah. Okay. I like to look like a fool. Come on. If it is possible. Put this dandelion down. I will take care of him. One second, let me find it. Let my, and, and all the references with me are here in the mind. Oh, look at boasting. boasting now that boasting. Bob is looking for references, I will continue talking. Every single point he mentioned, actually the reality is completely otherwise. It's completely the opposite. The Christians, when they went into land, they forced entire populations into Christianity. One big example. How many examples can I give? There are many. Andalusia. I'll give you one. Andalusia, Spain. They simply wiped out every single Jewish Muslim, Muslim from the Iberian. Of course, you got it. Of course, you got, got it. it. Right? So let's We've talk got about it now. Now, I will Shut ask Bob. I will Bob. ask Bob yeah. to give me one reference where a Muslim government, as a policy of government, forced people into Islam to accept the religion. One reference. Listen to me again. Listen to me again. Listen to my question again. Let me reply. Now, let me reply. Now notice, Adnan demanded one reference where Muslims forced Christians to accept Islam. Yes. That was the challenge. Here is the reference. Are you all listening? Where is the source? Be quiet, I'm going to tell you. The history of Greece under the Ottoman and Venetian domination okay. by George Finley. Okay. That is your reference. Okay. This is a book that you can get from any good library or you can buy from Waterstones. Okay. Listen to what it said. What is it? Mohammed II, who was the caliph of the Ottoman Empire. He was not. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> no, 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 no.
Listen, not history. Mohammed, is that what you just read? Is that what you just read? No, no listen. Is that what you just read? Yeah. Notice no, he, he doesn't not. want to listen. He was, he was not Notice. a caliph. Notice. He demanded a, a civil a conversation. Yes. But now I'm giving the reference. He doesn't want to listen. Correct him after he's done. Thank you. So far, he's the one looking at Mohammed the second. Impose the tribute. So he's dropped the word caliph. Okay. Listen. He dropped the word caliph. Notice. No, he doesn't. No, he dropped the word caliph. To listen. Good progress. Be quiet, Adnan. Be quiet and listen. It's funny how you demand a civil conversation until it goes against you, let's do it. Let's do and then you throw let's away the rules. Let's do that. Let's Not shouting. Let's, let's do that. Is that possible? Practice what you want to shake hands? Yeah, we can shake hands. Okay. No shouting. No. No right. shouting. No, no. Okay. I'm going to talk to that person at the back. No, no, no. Listen. No, 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 no. no Shouting. Adnan, Calm discussion. be quiet. Okay. So this is why. I, oh, here we go. I can notice he demanded the reference. These are incapable and now of having a I'm giving discussion. the reference. He can't shut up. Notice. I, I want a decent discussion. Adnan, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> shut up, Adnan. All the Christians. Oh my gosh. gosh. I he demanded the reference. William. Professional Let him finish. How do you know that? Thank you. Can you ask him to be calm? Adnan. Can you ask him to be calm? Oh my God. I'm not asking. Adnan. Oh, shut up! Thank you! Do we shake hands or calm? We've already done that. No, no. I can shake your hand in many times. A calm discussion. Right, well, shut up then. Uh, no, so, I, will, I will. A calm discussion. Oh, here we go. Don't shout. Right, can I read? Yes. Do you want to hear me read? Yes. Do you want Adnan to shut up for a minute? Yes. yes. Shut up then. Yes. Right, guys. Adnan demanded a reference. Don't shout. I have given you a book. A book that you can buy, a book that you can read, a book that you can borrow from any good library. So, Mohammed II imposed the tribute of Christian children on Greece, as then existed in other Christian provinces of his empire. A fifth of their male children was exacted from the Sultan's Christian subjects as part of that tribute which the Ottomans believed was declared in the Quran as a lawful price of toleration to those who refused to embrace Islam. This group of children, and we have a Greek right here, Tell me, bro, is this a lie? He's the opposite. <laughs> Don't be passive. What happened to Greek children? Were Just because he's Greek is an authority in history. What, sorry? They were. That's a Greek speaking about his own history. Let him finish. Let him finish. If you think I'm... Shut up. Let him finish. You were going a minute ago. You're still here. He was going 10 minutes ago, he's still here. Yeah, Bob. So, continue, Bob. One second. Don't interrupt, Bob, please. Go on. Thank you. Go on. Well please, done. Him, Especially you. Now. I'm trying. No, you're not. You I'm just waiting. He's still talking. I'm preparing the chain ball. There you go. Right. I'm preparing the historic chain ball. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't believe me, we go. I invite you right now. To speak to Greek. Right now, get on your phones. Google the word Janissary. Google it right now. See if I'm lying or I'm telling the truth. Google the word Tommy. Go and speak to the Christians from Greece, like this brother here, and ask him if I'm lying. Christian children were taken as tribute. They were forced to convert to Islam. Now, I agree with Adnan's defense. It's not legitimized in Islam. However, Adnan did not ask me to prove that it was legitimized in Islam. He asked me to prove that a Muslim caliphate actually did it with a reference and I have met his challenge. So what's wrong with my argument? Okay, my turn, thank you. I'm gonna speak calmly because I was requesting for, from Bob to be calm, not shout, not scream, not, don't be so passionate because there's no need to, to lose up. I am so calm 
so uh, contained because I know I have the references there. Every single thing you mentioned there can be easily refuted by any modern history on the Ottomans and their conquest. Number one, the source he quoted from was what? 1856. 1856. No primary reference. A, a 19th century During the work. Height of war. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. No, 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 no. That's true. Okay. <laughs> this the book, Bob. <laughs> Bob quoted from was published in 1856. What do more what do modern historians say about histories published in the 19th century? Why were the British historians in particular and Western historians in general throughout the 19th century painting the Muslims like that? Now I'll give you another example. Okay? There was a period when Britain had colonized Muslim lands in order to maintain their colonialism and to be seen as tolerant or beacons, uh, or beacons of liberalism or beacons of freedom and justice. They painted the past history of Muslims as barbaric. Okay, this is what all modern historians, Western historians have to say. Now ask me for references and I'll give you references where they say this. Now, where is the reference? The most up-to-date history of the Ottomans is by Caroline Finkel. Caroline Finkel has written a book titled, uh, the, uh, titled Osman's Dream. Why doesn't she say anything like that in her book? The book goes over 500 pages, right? And she is discussing all the history of the Ottomans and Quick the conquest. Question. Okay, now One I'm question, going to be interrupted. Adam. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I was you silent. were happy to do it. I was silent. I was silent. Are you work. saying she denies the Janissaries' existence? I was, I, let me finish. Let me finish. Well, answer that question. Okay. Now, there is a reason. You weren't saying I'm in a There is a reason. There is a reason why Bob, Bob, I will request that I was. I, Bob, I will request your silence until I finish because Bob, I waited. What you preach. I waited, right? No, you didn't. I, I waited. You interrupted Bob. me continuously. Okay. Bob, people, people are watching. Let them decide. Yes, they, can decide. Decide. Okay. they can decide. My only purpose of interrupting was to have a decent discussion, which we agreed to, and you still continue to shout. Yeah. I'm not shouting. I don't want to shout. You were interrupting. Okay. Actually, so I'm not going to shout. I will give references. Easy. Caroline Finkel. Yeah, so Caroline yeah, Finkel, who published her Osman's Dream. I invite everyone to go and read Osman's Dream. A dream, which is by Caroline Finkel, not a Muslim propagandist. I don't know whether she's a Christian or whether she's an atheist. She's not a Muslim, right? Read the book, and you will see what Janissaries were. Coming to Janissaries, number one, Bob quickly dropped the word Caliph from the name Muhammad II. Amazingly, when I challenged him, because he assumed he was a Caliph. Ottomans never claimed Caliphate until 1517. 1517 was the year when Sultan Salim, the father of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, defeated <coughs> the Mo Mamluks in the Middle East. That's when the Ottomans claimed Caliphate. Before that, Ottomans never claimed to be Caliphs. Sultan Muhammad II was not a Caliph. So that's why he quickly dropped the title. If I didn't challenge him, he wouldn't have dropped it, okay? Fortunately and unfortunately for him, my field is history. That's why he's going to have a ride. He's going to have a ride of his life now. You know, I'm going to show him what generous is. Ask him if, if he has ever touched, let alone read, a book on Janissaries. Ask him. And have you, have the you answer. Bob. No, no, let yes, him answer. I have. Which one? Which one? I can't remember the title. <laughs> What does that prove? What does that prove? Nothing. What does that prove? Nothing. Wait. Wait. It proves wait. Nothing. Guys, guys, don't accept that. I don't, don't give him the excuse to run away. Bob is gonna have the ride of his life again, once again. Yes. Um, no, no, forget Google, man. I, the, the information is there. The title of the book. Anyone with two brain cells would have known the title. The title of the book is Janissaries. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Published by, on, no, no. published by. Oh, no, published by. On. Published by. Published by Saki Press. Adnan. The book is titled Janissaries. In that book, what do you read? Adnan. Wait. Can I reply? Wait. Of course you can. No, reply. You're sorry. So, In your time. So Adnan. In your time. Adnan. Hello, Bob. Bob. I was he silent. quoted Caroline wait, Finkel's wait, book. Wait, wait. I have it here. You can read it. Let me quote you it. You can read it. You can read Let it in your time. Let me quote it. Read it in your time. Let me quote it. Read it in your own time. Let me quote it. Let me finish my response, then you can read it. Have On Janissaries. On Janissaries, what happened with the Janissaries? There was 
a, an order, a military order the Ottomans had within the army called the Divshermi order. It was called the Divshermi. Okay? In this book, Genesaries, published by Saki Press, this scholar, he argues that there were Greek Christian parents. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. Greek Christian parents were voluntarily uh, no, just going no, on, be bro. patient be bro. patience Wrap is the key point or patience. I'm going to walk away okay, because wait, okay, you right. want to do a monologue I know it burns this information burns no it is it's a hard to wait 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 this is this is Bob burning right wait Not really okay yes, yes, be patient bro I'm finishing no I'm finishing okay finish finishing come on okay La last point I want to make on Janissaries and the Sherme. The, sh the, sh the Sherme was the order that was handling the case of Janissaries. Janissaries were a special corp within the Ottoman army with the highest ranks. Christian parents, listen to me carefully, would voluntarily bring their children and leave them with the, the Sherme. Greek Christian parents. Now, how do we know this? I will give you one particular example. Wrap up, Adnan. Ibrahim, Ibrahim Pasha. Ibrahim Pasha, the, the most powerful man during the reign of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, the most powerful Ottoman emperor who governed from 1520 to 1566. 46 years. The most powerful prime minister in this period was a man called Ibrahim Pasha. Ibrahim Pasha was a Greek child who was voluntarily submitted by his parents to the Devshirme so that he can be educated, so that he can rise in the military ranks and become one day a general. He not only became a general, he was the prime minister of the Ottoman Empire, okay, a you. child who was voluntarily well done, surrendered done, done. by done. Christian parents. Right. Now, let's to this. Case closed. So, case closed. Now, notice, the Muslims are all clapping Wait. for a justification. One second. Make this one second. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. shut up a minute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, three minutes. No, three minutes. Three minutes. no, I don't three minutes. No, I don't agree. You want justice? I don't agree. You want justice? I don't agree. Three minutes each. Notice is interrupting. No, 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 I'm not interrupting. Notice is interrupting. Okay, let, let, notice is interrupting. Let them go. No problem. No problem. Let notice let is interrupting. No, 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 no. Now notice, ladies and gentlemen. No, no, I don't need to interrupt. That Adnan's Muslim audience clapped the justification of the kidnap of Christian children. That's what you applauded. That's what you applauded. And here we have a supremacist saying that it was not kidnap. Think for a moment. Would you, Muslims, give up your children to be raised as Christians? Would you abandon your families to a state that had conquered your lands, oppressed your religion, and now was demanding your children. Would you just surrender them? Of course you wouldn't. Yes, we would. No. I yes, pity your family, Adnan. And I will explain but notice why. the interruption oh, once again. Question, notice the you interruption. Ask the you ask the I was asking them, not you. Oh, sorry. Oh. So, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. so, yeah, yes, my would. point to you is, you think that I'm lying. So go and ask the Greeks to tell you their history. They are liars. And, no. and ask is that? for being ashamed Please do not interrupt him. I want him to continue. Don't ask. Go and ask the Romanians to tell you their history. They have. They have. They have poems, literature written at the time. Racist talking poems. about yeah. their mourning, racist, talking about their mourning over the loss of their children. They, the Serbians, <laughs> have entire canticles. One Greek poem. Notice the Muslims interrupting once again. The supremacists who want to applaud Islamic jihad. Those Christians, like the Serbian Christians, have entire canticles celebrating the fight of King Stephen, Saint Stephen, at the Battle of Kosovo against 
Notice the supremacist interrupt. Which year is that? The court against Islamic occupation. Don't interrupt him. Muslims, everything that we are talking about is based upon the fact that Islamic armies were committed to jihad and invaded Christian lands. That is a historical fact. <coughs> Quoting, what's the name of that? Uh, he didn't even read. Okay. okay. Well, who wrote it? Uh, who wrote Spencer. it? So Robert Spencer wrote a book, so The History of Jihad, and this is a quote, this is a quote from Caroline Finkel. In Osman's dream, the history of the Ottoman Empire. That's just one perspective. Yes. Caroline Finkel's yeah. perspective. Well, the man he just quoted as an authority. It's a woman. <laughs> Sorry, the woman, my apologies. <laughs> the great warrior, the great warrior did not, however, realize that aspiration before he died in 1324, his successor, Orkan, succeeded in conquering Nicaea <coughs> in 1331. So they invaded Christian lands and suppressed the Christian faith. <coughs> this continued Osman's work of consolidating the Turkish states of Asia Minor under his rule. The resulting Sultanate and future Caliphate and Empire bore the name of the first leader, Osman, and became known in English as the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans were able to gain control over small Turkish states of the region because it was said of their indefatigable commitment to jihad. So the Islamic State of the Ottoman Caliphate was ideologically committed to the violent invasion of Christian lands and did so. Notice the apologist tries to argue against history. One second. You spoke for a long time. Carry on. No, I am. I am. The Ottoman Caliphate. You don't need to take my word for it. Ask a Greek. If you think I'm lying, go and speak to the Christians in Eastern Europe. And the Muslim supremacists here may laugh and joke about stealing Christian children, about conquering Christian land, but ultimately, if you think I'm lying, Go and ask the people who suffered it. The Greek historians are in no doubt, and many of them are modern historians. They are in no doubt about what it meant to be conquered and dominated by the Ottoman Caliphate. And simply saying that a historian wrote a book in the 19th century and that means I am that that is discredited history is a poor way to construct your historical investigation. Agnan claims to be a historian. He's not a historian. He is an apologist for a supremacist ideology and for the crimes of an Ottoman caliphate <coughs> that imposed Sharia by force. Okay, thank you, Bob. Thank you for all that shouting and screaming. No, no, no. Okay, now my turn to speak. I did not interrupt Bob. In fact, yes, you did. In, in fact, Biden. yes, you did. Biden. In fact, I was telling people to be quiet and silent when he was talking, right? People right? Decide so, so there's a reason why I let Bob speak, right? Because I don't want him to say later on that he didn't have the chance to speak. He didn't have the, you know, he didn't have the time to to express his ideas and all the. Have you noticed he read one quote 
from Caroline Finkel. Yes. And the quote doesn't say anything about Janissaries. Absolutely. It doesn't say anything about forced conversion. It only talks about Ottoman expansion. That's not the point of the debate, though, is it, Adam? Uh, well, did I interrupt you? Yes, you did. No, I, I did. No, I did not. Lie. I did not. Yes, you did. have to be patient, Bob. I know. I know. Practice talking, what you preach. I know. I, I know. When I give information, it can be very painful for extremists. Okay, because I am anti-extremist. I am anti. I'm a medicine for extremists, right? I, when I when, when I'm, I am I consider myself self antiseptic medicine for extremists. What kind of extremists am I talking about? There are two kinds of people who agree on this version of Islam, the one they pre, they present to the people, ISIS and them. Okay, yes. they are united on this version of Islam. ISIS and Islamophobes are brothers in one faith. Yes. Okay, yes. <coughs> and that faith is hatred of Islam. Okay, so the point. I want to make it. Caroline Finkel did not say anything about Janissaries. You see, have you noticed he has quickly abandoned that point because he has nothing more to say on that. We started with forced conversion and I gave you references. The book of, if you read the book called Janissaries, published by Saki Press, in that book, the author clearly gives examples where Christian Greek parents were voluntarily coming forward, submitting their children to the Difsharmi. The order that was taking care of them, educating them, training them in military arts, and the outcome was people like Ibrahim Pasha, the most powerful man in Ottoman history. Greeks! Ibrahim Pasha was Greek! Yeah. Coming from a Christian family. Muhammad so what, what he wants is, yeah, he wants, yes, <coughs> as beautiful as Islamic history may be, <coughs> they can't see it. You know what, why? Because they put on lenses, the Trinitarian lens, okay? The Trinitarian lens three shows you three, okay? If I put on this lens and it has Trinity on it, three colors, it will show me three people, right? This is why they see good Islam, bad Islam, and even worse Islam, right? That's why they three, see three Islams. They can't see one Islam. We Muslims see one Islam. Why? Because we are a people of monotheism, the heat. So coming back to history of the Ottomans. Ottomans, why did they expand? He kept saying that Ottomans were invading Christian territories. Do you know why? Do you know anything about the Crusades against the Ottomans? Do you know what the Catholic Church was doing to Ottomans? Do you know why Uthman, the founder of the Ottoman dynasty, why he was fighting the Crusaders? Do you know why Orhan, his son, was confronted? They were fighting the Crusaders. You know why he doesn't mention it? Two reasons. Either he's a liar, deliberately hiding the information, yeah. or he doesn't know about it. I'm pretty sure he doesn't know about it. He doesn't. Ottomans were fighting the Crusaders. Exactly. The Crusaders are coming down, attacking them, okay? And Catholic Church was actively, actively inciting violence against Muslims. And this started from the very first crusade in 1095 when Pope Urban II, a Christian head of the state and the church, he said, go and kill Muslims and liberate the Holy Land. Those crusades never stopped. After Sultan Salahuddin took back Jerusalem, they continued. And uh, these crusaders kept coming into Central Asia, sorry, Asia Minor, uh, current day Turkey. And they kept attacking Muslim tribes, Turkic tribes, initially the Seljuks, and then later on the Ottomans. This is the history it would never tell you. That's why I invite you to go and read Caroline Finkel, not Robert Spencer. Now he mentioned, without shame, these people have no shame, okay? Without shame, he quotes Robert Spencer. Imagine if I was arguing about the Jewish people and I quoted Hitler as my authority. Exactly. What would you think? Exactly. What would you think of me? Crazy. Okay, you would think either I'm a liar or I'm stupid, right? Propaganda. Okay, both fit on this guy. Indeed. Both, Indeed. right? Indeed. Okay, wait. Okay, Robert Spencer is the most notorious Islamophobe in the world. He is the most notorious, to an extent that Brevik, Andrews Brevik, he quoted him. He quoted him in his manifesto. When he killed Shame. over 70 people, you know who's, who his inspir inspiration was? Robert, Robert Spencer. Spencer. No wonder these people think like I says. No, I did not interrupt you. Be yes, patient. Uh, it's antiseptic. I know it burns. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, wait, 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 I've got, I've got wait, other historians. Wait, wait, wait. I have other historians. No problem. Keep, Google, keep Googling. Keep I Googling. Keep Googling. Keep Googling. First, Google. in his first turn, he presented a history from 1856. Google.
Then he came up with Robert Spencer. Now he's gonna come up with something like maybe maybe Netanyahu. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Netanyahu. You never know. Okay. So I'm gonna leave him to to do that. Do your Google research while I'm talking. Okay. So the point is, I am quoting. I am quoting without a break. Western academic sources. What? Not Muslims. You quoted one. Muslim, Muslim. Get it no, right. You no, quoted no, one. No, 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 no. Caroline two. Finkel. Two. Who was two. the other? Genissaries. The book. Who was the other? Title Genissaries. Who was the published other? Published by Saki Press. Saki published Press. Saki Who was Press. the author? I'll give you the author's name now. Okay. Okay. I'll Google it and I'll That's give it fine. to you now. Okay. Oh, so you can use Google. I have read the book. <laughs> I've read the book and so I, I. I've read the book. Okay. No, so, no. so the point is, the point is, all of his points fallen or fall on the face and this is what happened to extremists every time we debate isis sympathizers and christian missionaries they think alike they want one version of islam they read isis version of islam in our sources and isis read their version of islam in our sources and who's the victim muslims. the muslims the muslims have to come out and they have to put the nuanced picture of Islam out and they don't they don't care about uh, you know hist I historians now, I and modern sources so 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 no no no, no I'm not finished I was patient I let you go no, you on I, I let you go on I let you go on Who so let me let me go on sorry sorry I'm, I'm talking please 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 be patient okay now now with regards to Ottomans how did they treat Christians and Jews it's a very important question he keeps saying they forced people they killed people they were massacring the they, 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 they were massacring people now I will, I've got it right here. I will give you one example in particular. 2.5 million, okay, actually. Wait, wait, wait. wait. But he does, he's not going to okay. talk about that, is he? A Jewish historian called Amnon Cohen. What, what is his name? Amnon, Amnon, Amnon Cohen. Cohen. He published a two-volume two volume work, antiseptic. Okay, <laughs> two volume works. He published two, volume, uh, two volumes work in 1994. The work was titled A Word From Within and the work contained a study of Jerusalem court records, Islamic courts in Jerusalem from the year 1570 to 15, sorry, 1500 to 1570. For 70 years, Amnon Cohen, an Israeli scholar, possibly a Zionist Israeli scholar, studied the court records from Jerusalem for the year 1570, sorry, 1500 to 1570. The reign of Sultan Suleiman. What did he find? He found 1,000 Jewish cases filed in the court. Which court? Muslim court, the Sharia court. The Jews had their own courts. The Christian had their own courts. The Ottomans allowed absolute freedom to Christians as well as Jews lies. to govern by lies. You can come and come, come and kill me. Kill me with your responses, right? Let me speak for now, okay? Antiseptic information, I can even hear the sizzling in, in my ear, okay? So, Adnan, wrap up your point, bro. Did I do that to you? Yes, you did. No, I didn't. I did it. 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 You cannot deceive the audience. You cannot deceive. I was silent. I will be silent again. Watch. I will be silent. Even if you go on to five minutes. You interrupted me plenty. Okay, wait, wait. Now, Ottomans in Istanbul, they had a neighborhood called Galata. Galata was mainly inhabited by Christians and Jews. You just go on, Adnan. Finish your point, bro. There is a historian called Soraya Faruqi. Now you know She's an academic. She has written works on the condition of the Jews and Christians in Ottoman, uh, Ottoman Istanbul and Ost Ottoman Salonika, the city of Salonika. And Amnon Cohen, in his conclusion, clearly states that the Jews of Ottoman Jerusalem lived better than Muslims. They cherished their condition under the Ottomans and they had nothing to complain about. Likewise, Suraya Faruqi, she argues okay, that nice. in Ottoman, in Adnan, Ottoman Istanbul... Adnan, you've, you've gone on. I get the point no, that you're can making. Can I finish my point? Yeah, but can you're I just going to make point? another point. Can and I finish my point? You do this every time. Can I finish my point? You do this every time. Can I finish my point? Finish your point, point. then. Yeah. Ladies and Quiet, gentlemen, I hope you're watching my patient and his patients. You yeah. See? And there's a reason why he's impatient. Because, because he just keeps talking. Because the information he is antiseptic. And then he goes on to make another point. The information is antiseptic. The information is antiseptic. So let me finish. Let me finish your point then, Adnan. So, in Ottoman Istanbul, in the neighborhood of Galata, where Christians and Jews, you know, you messed with the wrong person, I hope. I oh, hope. come yeah. on, Adnan, okay, finish okay. your point, bro. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, your Christian brothers and sisters will see some light. They will see right. the reality. Guys. 
Okay. I've waited I'm patiently I'm for Adnan I'm to finishing. finish his point. I'm finishing. And he's I'm just finishing. going on and on and on. Do it in your next turn. Okay. So, okay. Last no, no, last no, no, no. I've waited too long. Okay, can you not shout? No, I'm going Carry to on. speak. Yeah, speak. I'm going to speak. But don't shout, please. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I'll be silent. Watch me. Ladies, silent. And ladies, and ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. He said that the invasion of Christian lands in Eastern Europe was a response to the crusade of Latin Christians. That is a lie. Eastern Europe was Eastern Orthodox Christians, not Roman Catholic Christians. He lied to you just then. He said that the Christians had nothing to complain about. However, Benny Morris, an Israeli historian, writing in the book, The 30-Year Genocide, Turkey's Destruction of Its Christian Minorities, 1894 to 1924, so another historian, points out that the Ottoman Empire killed 2.5 million Christians. And he says they had nothing to complain about. Adnan is lying to you because he is not a historian. He is an apologist for Islamic supremacism. Now, he tried to blur the lines between ISIS and a legitimate telling of Christian history. In other words, according to Adnan's supremacist worldview, if you point out the crimes of an Islamic caliphate, you're an extremist, you're a hate preacher, you're like Bravik, you're an Islamophobe. But the reality is, if we Christians tell our own history, we're just telling our own experience of what it meant to be dominated by an Islamic caliphate. Now, if you don't believe me, as Adnan doesn't, you can go and buy the book and read it for yourselves. I'll give you the title again. The 30-year genocide of Turkey's destruction of its Christian minorities, 1894 to 1924. You see, Adnan, in his supremacist worldview, thinks that only he can talk about history. He thinks that only he can talk about the experience of history. And he betrays exactly the kind of ideology that ISIS portrays. He believes that the word, the historian of a Muslim, is better than everyone else's. That only those that portray Islam in a good light can be telling facts. So every historian ever, and I've quoted two historians and one polemicist, everyone who forms a critique of Islamic history, even academics from the 19th century, are all Islamophobes. These are not lies. Truth number one, Muslims invaded Christian lands. Truth number two, Muslims in the Ottoman Empire enslaved Christian children as Janissaries. Truth number three, Muslims in the Ottoman Empire instituted laws that discriminated against Christians and made them second-class people in their own lands. So, quoting again, showing 
climate change. Good Muslims invaded Christian lands. From Robert Spencer's book, okay. a man I quote as a polemicist. However, if you think he's lying, go and check the facts that I'm now going to read and see if he's lying. Google it right now. Go on, Google it right now. So, on June, on June the 15th, 1389, the jihadis engaged Christian forces in the battle at Kosovo. Notice the Muslims interrupting. I'm not Muslim. But they weren't interrupting Adnan. From together. And in the early days of jihad, the Muslims prevailed against a stronger, larger force of Serbs and Bulgarians. Now tell me. Why would the Serbs and the Bulgarians bother to fight the Muslims if the Ottoman Empire was not invading their lands? Bearing in mind the date, 1389, the Crusades as a project was all but over in 1389. And the Serbs and the Bulgarians were not big parties in the Crusades. So his attempt to legitimize this information was a lie. Why was it a lie? Because Adnan is not a historian. Adnan is an apologist for Islamic supremacism and he believes that what the Ottoman Caliphate did when it invaded Christian lands was justified. The Janissaries fought with the real zeal of proselytes against their idolatrous countrymen. In other words, they had been converted to Islam and then they had been sent back to kill their own fathers, their own mothers, their own brothers and their own sisters. Little wonder that across Eastern Europe you can find poems, songs, songs, cantigals and stories of Christians, of Christians who when they defeated the Ottomans they didn't celebrate, they didn't have a party, they mourned, they cried because they knew that the people that they had defeated in battle were their own children. And if you don't believe me, if you think that I'm an Islamophobe, as Adnan wants to slur me as, then go and ask the people in Bulgaria, Romania, Greece and Serbia. Because Adnan has smeared, smeared all of those people, tens of millions of people. He has just smeared them as Islamophobes because they remember the crimes of the Ottomans. As far as Adnan is concerned, if me telling the truth of history makes me an Islamophobe, then the Greeks are Islamophobes, the Bulgarians are Islamophobes, the Serbs are Islamophobes, the Romanians are Islamophobes, the Ukrainians are Islamophobes, the Croatians are Islamophobes, the Albanian Christians are Islamophobes, the Austrian Christians are Islamophobes, because they all agree with me, not Adnan. Thank you very much. Did I interrupt? No. Did I interrupt once? No. Hopefully he won't interrupt me. Okay.
Firstly, he talked about a massacre of Christians from 1894 to 1924. Yes? Okay. He's talking about the Armenian genocide. No, I'm not. What are you talking about then? Talking about the Assyrian genocide. Well, that is the Go Armenian. And, no, okay. it isn't. Okay. Okay. Go and speak Can to I? the Assyrians. Okay. It is not to be confused okay. so with the only... Armenian genocide. Okay. That is it's something separate. It's my turn. Well, don't lie. I have to be patient. Even if I'm lying, because you've been lying all the way. I, and I was silent, listening to your lies. So you have to be patient with my lies if they are so lies. So talk about the Assyrian okay. genocide. You have to be patient lying. with my lies. Stop, Stop lying. Because I, if I'm lying, let people check. Okay, the only genocide we know of, because he doesn't know anything about history, not at all. and he doesn't know, only genocide we are talking about is the Armenian genocide, not Assyrian genocide, Armenian genocide. Don't interrupt, don't, okay, don't, well, don't interrupt. Don't, okay, the authority on Ottoman history, especially the Armenian period, that period when the genocide, alleged, alleged genocide was committed, who is the authority, amazingly? A Zionist, Jewish historian named Bernard Lewis. Bernard Lewis. Bernard Lewis was Zionist. He was Jewish. He died very recently. He even advised the American government to invade Iraq. This is how far he went. I will say, I will go as far as to say that he was an established Islamophobe. Despite all that, Bernard Lewis, he clearly stated in his works on Ottoman history and Turkish history that the Armenian genocide was not the doing of the Ottomans. It was not the doing of Ottomans. Rather, rather, the Armenian genocide was caused by a number of factors and it was not the Ottoman governmental policy. Who says so? Not me, not Adnan Rashid, who's not a historian, according to him, Bernard Lewis. And amazingly, I have, I have all these references in my mind for some reason. Okay, he has to Google everything. Okay, he has to Google everything. But I am aware of these things, thankfully. Right? Second point, he jumped from 1924 to 1389. He jumped almost six centuries. You know why he's doing that? Because there's nothing in the middle he can find. He has nothing to say on all the great things I mentioned about Ottoman treatment towards the Jews as well as the Christians in Galata, in Istanbul, in Saranika, and books have been written. Halil and Alsik. Halil and Alsik is another Ottoman historian. Go and read his books. Halil and Alsik, Caroline Finkel, okay, Quartet, okay, then there is Freya Faruqi, Amnon Cohen. All of these people have written on auto, including go and read Bernard Lewis also. Read him. When you read these established, certified historians, not Islam hating Islamophobes like Robert Spencer. Robert Spencer is not a historian. He's an Islamophobe who's making money out of gullible people like him who read his books. And they make conclusions on history. So all the references I'm giving are very clear. There is no doubt, if you read Caroline Finkel's book, The Osmond's, uh, sorry, Osmond's Dream, in that book she gives all the details why Ottomans were fighting the Byzantines and the Crusaders, Latin Crusaders, Latin. This guy, you see, I don't think he expected me to talk to him on this topic. Okay, he's not left with any choice but to go on Google and in desperation find quotes. Just throw anything in the discussion. Just throw, because the discussion started with what? Genissaries were being forced into Islam. No, it wasn't. Right? Wait, 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 don't interrupt, don't interrupt. Even I was silent, I was silent. Ladies and gentlemen, watch his behavior. I was silent, I was silent, I was silent, I was silent, okay, so why do people like this see darkness in Muslim history, they, ha they cannot see, any you know why I refer to academics, academics have to be objective, even if they have an agenda, even if they have bias and prejudice, they have to, they have to pretend to be objective, they have to mention great things about the Ottoman history. Now, I'm not saying Ottomans are perfect. I'm not standing by everything they did. I am sure they did great mistakes. The point here is to expose his lies. He doesn't know anything about Ottomans and what they did with the Jews and Christians. He sees darkness. Like ISIS, they see darkness in Islam and Islamic sources. All this is darkness. Islam, ugh, sword, okay, it's sword. It's all sword, okay? These guys, when they read Islam, they see sword.
They see darkness. They see destruction. They don't see the coexistence between Jews and Christians and Muslims. They don't see 1,000 years of Muslim civilization. They don't see our libraries. They don't see our philosophers. They don't see Al-Andalus. They don't see Baghdad. They don't see the libraries and the universities and the street lamps of Cordoba. They don't see the civilization Muslims had achieved for over a thousand years. Bernard Lewis states, the man who actually specialized in Turkish history, he states that 90% of the world's Jewish population, listen to me carefully, everyone, 90% of the world's Jewish population survived for 1,000 years under Muslim protection. Muslim protection. Muslims protected the Jews from who? From who? From them. From them, those who are wearing crosses like this and their uniforms, crusaders, crusaders and Christian governments of Europe. Where was the Holy Spirit? What happened to the Christians? Was Holy Spirit on holiday for 1,000 years? Was Holy Spirit not there to guide the flock of Jesus? The lovely gospel reading flock of Jesus, those who are burning Christians, their own brethren, burning for three centuries, European Christians, Christians, I insist Christians, okay? Of course Christians have changed today. Of course Christians have changed today. Christians are different people today. They liberal, secular um, ideologies have changed Christians. Christians up to the 19th century were not the same. I'll tell you something, the last witch, the last witch to be burnt alive in Europe was burnt in 1782. How long was that? How long ago was that? Two centuries, 200 years ago. The last witch to be burnt alive in Britain was burnt in 1726 in Scotland. For three centuries, Bob's Christian brothers were burning witches. Hundreds, hundreds of thousands of women were burnt alive at stake. Little, less than 200 meters from the spot where I stand. Less than 200 meters away, there is a place called Tyburn Gallows. Tyburn Gallows, there, in front of the 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 marble, in front of the marble arch. That's where people were executed, burnt, decapitated, quartered. All kinds of things were done by Bob's Christian brothers. He doesn't see that for three centuries. It doesn't stop there. Heretics were being burnt alive. Scientists. Galileo nearly got burnt for his heliocentric theory of the universe or solar system. Galileo, when he came out, he said, actually the solar system is heliocentric, not geocentric. You know what the church said to him? He was put on trial, nearly burnt alive. Others were actually burnt alive by the church. Who was doing it? Christians. What did Bob do? I really want him to come back and comment on that. Really want him to do that. He can see Ottomans doing all those evil things, according to Robert Spencer and all the Islamophobes he's reading yes, online. Yes. He can see all that. But what has Bob to say about Crusades? He said Crusades ended by the 14th century. No, I will again guide you to an academic source, Housley. H-O-U-S-L-E-Y. That's the name of the scholar. And the book is titled Later Crusades. Crusades continued until the 16th century. In fact, some people say the Battle of Lepanto between the Ottomans and the Christians, the Christian Habsburg, a coalition, a coalition of Habsburg and Phoenicians and the Catholic Church in general. In 1571, the Battle of Lepanto was regarded as crusade against the Ottomans. So he doesn't know again what he's talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, my difficulty with people like this is that you cannot possibly argue with ignorant people. I am continuously I am continuously guiding you to academic sources. Go and read Western academic sources. Not Muslim propagandists, not Muslim uh, polemicists or apologists. Not one name I mentioned in my discussion today. Okay, I can give you Muslim sources, for example. For example, Salabi, Salabi, Muhammad Ali as Salabi has written books on Muslim history. They have been translated into English. I will never guide you to go and read his books. They are for Muslims. Okay, right? But I have not mentioned one Muslim apologist source. I have continued throughout, I've mentioned all. Western academic sources. 
One of them was Suraya Faruqi, who is a Muslim, but her books have been published by Western academic institutions. She is reputable, she's recognized as an academic. Bob, on the other hand, has nothing academic. Who does he have? A 19th century source, Finley, okay, or Robert Spencer, a well known it's a Islamophobe. It's a joke. He's like Hitler to the Jews, Jews right? Yes. So, the point is, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know about Muslim history, Muslim civilization, Muslim conquest for that matter, go and read academics. Published books published by reputable institutions like Cambridge, Oxford, Columbia, Pennsylvania, Georgetown. Okay, these scholars are recognized. They will tell you both sides. They will tell you what happened in wars and they will tell you how Muslims in general treated the Jews and Christians. Now Bob will never comment on two things and I hope he proves me wrong when he comes back. The good treatment towards the Jews and the Christians throughout the Muslim civilization, not only Ottomans, throughout the Muslim civilization. Did Muslims ever do anything good to the Jews and Christians? Simple question. Forget everything. Did Muslims ever do anything good to the Jews and Christians? Question number one. Did the Christians ever do anything bad? Do women, for example, witches being burnt alive for three centuries, or heretics being burnt alive, or the Crusades, or the Inquisition, or the Inquisition. No, you can, of course, patience. I was listening. Okay. These two questions, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to keep these two questions in mind. When Bob comes back and see how Christian missionaries are completely incapable of being objective in their discussion on Islam and Muslims, they, like ISIS, see darkness in our sources. ISIS and these missionaries are brothers in one faith. And that faith is hatred of Islam. And there are other Islamophobes like him as well. Yeah. So, wait, no, let me, let me reply. No, 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 answer my two questions. No, I'm going to deal with it. I'm no, going to be silent We're not talking about that. We're talking about something else. What I find, why do you know? I want to talk about something else. Bro, no, I want to talk about something else. Right, notice. I really wanted to hear what you So, ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, Adnan, the apologist for Islamic supremacism, has tried to mischaracterize my argument because I quoted a polemical writer, Robert Spencer. He ignored the fact that I also quoted two independent historians. I'll give him some more books. The Forgotten Genocide, Eastern Christians, The Last Arameans by S. Cortois, a book written using the documents of the Dominicans who recorded the genocide of Assyrian Christians before the Armenian Massacre. That's the book you could read. Who published it? I've just given you the publisher. Yes, who's the publisher? I've just given you the publisher. I, I, sorry, tell, tell me again, I forgot. Who's the publisher? The author by Eschatoius. No, it doesn't the publisher. Give it. It doesn't the publisher? Give it. I need the publisher. Well, you can Google it. Stop okay. interrupting. No, I'm not interrupting. Stop interrupting. Okay, so right. there's, no, there's no publisher. So, no, there's no publisher. So, talk about clutch at straws. Every time. You meet what he demands of you, he changes the golf posts. He changes the target. So Muslim. He demanded historians. Well, here's one. The myth of the Andalusian paradise by Dario Fernandez Morera, a Spanish historian speaking about the persecution of Christians in Spain because Adnan, the apologist, not a historian. Where's this? Where are we the, 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 the slavery. The slavery. Yes. So Adnan wanted to present Andalusia. Who's the publisher? As some ex I've just given you this reference. No, the publisher. Notice he's interrupting. The publisher. Notice he is interrupting. 
Shush, Adnan. I know it burns you. I know it burns you to hear history. But try, Adnan. Listen to what the historian wrote. Can I ask you a question? Listen to what the historian wrote. It's not a historian. Because this is speaking about Adnan. Other efforts to downplay the phenomenon of massive slavery in the Islamic empires have been similar marbles of academic ingenuity. Thus, defending slavery in the Islamic Mamluk Empire, as medieval study scholars offers the official view among specialists. It is important to understand that medieval Islamic civilization had a different attitude towards slavery than that seen in Western Europe. Mm. This is what the apologists say. Slaves were much better treated and their status was quite honourable. Furthermore, the career opportunities open to a skimful mameluk and the higher standards of living available. The historian is pointing out the efforts by people like Adnan Rashid to whitewash history. Go and read his book. He exposes the lie of this supremacist. He exposes the lie of this apologist. No, thank you. <laughs> who wants to dominate, who seeks to justify the domination of Islamic caliphates. We've given two references. We're going to do it. Let's talk about the Armenian and the Assyrian genocide. <clears throat> now remember, he tried to say that this wasn't the official actions of the government, bearing in mind that the genocides, two of them, happened independently and by two different governments. The Caliphate and Ataturk's secular Turkey. But when you hear the numbers of those that are slaughtered, do you honestly believe that it could be carried out without the sanction of a government? <laughs> all in all, about a million and a half Armenians were killed in the Armenian Genocide. 700,000 Greeks and 270,000, 75,000 Assyrians were killed in Ottoman territories under similar circumstances. And 25 chicken. So, Adnan is saying the Christians have nothing to complain about. So let me ask Adnan, the apologist, if we kill 275,000 Muslims in the UK, would you have something to complain about? If we killed one million and a half Muslims in Germany, would you have something to complain about? I put it to you that Adnan has lied to you. He said Christians in the Ottoman Empire under Muslim rule had nothing to complain about. Adnan is an apologist. The Ottoman Caliphate invaded Christian lands. They mass murdered Christians. They took Christian slaves. They desecrated Christian churches.
They confiscated Christian property. They restricted the rights of Christians to practice their faith fully and completely. If you doubt what I'm saying, Google it. Do your own research. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to believe the overwhelming weight of history. Go and speak to the Assyrian Christians if you think, as Adnan does, that I'm just an lying Islamophobic bigot. I don't believe that any genuine person who looks into this history can come to any other conclusion than that the Ottoman Caliphate was an unjust empire, resistance to whom, such as at the Battle of Lepento, was completely justified like that of the Battle of Kosovo, and whose demise and destruction at the hands of the Imperial West should be celebrated. And if you don't believe me, ask the Greeks, the Romanians, the Bulgarians, the Serbians, the Croatians, why they celebrate, not mourn, they don't mourn, they celebrate their independence from Ottoman rule. If it was so good, so amazing, so wonderful, why do they celebrate their freedom? If the Iberian, Hispanic domination of Islam was so great, so wonderful, so amazing, why do the Spanish celebrate their liberation? I'll tell you why. Because they remember the martyrs of Cordoba. They remember the desecration of the shrine of St. James. They remember what it means to pay the jizya and feel yourself humiliated as the Quran instructs that Christians are. Don't listen to this apologist. He wants to blur the lines between myself and ISIS. Why? And Adnan, this will be my last point. The reason why he wants to blur the lines between myself and Adnan, sorry, myself and ISIS, is because, is because he knows the evidence is against him. I've given him academic studies written by historians and he is hoping to win you over through an emotive response rather than a genuine analysis of the historical evidence. Adnan is not a historian. Those who apologise for the Islamic Caliphates are not historians. They are apologists seeking to justify Islamic supremacism. Okay, thank you, Bob, for that long uh, speech. Now it's my turn. Now, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, if you remember when I asked Bob to answer two questions, very simple questions. Did Muslims ever do anything good with the Jews and the Christians? Sorry, I forgot. He forgot. I did. He says he forgot. I did. Okay, you can come back in your turn. Answer no. these questions. Second question was, did Christians ever do anything bad to women, heretics, and non-Christians, i.e. the Jews and Muslims? The list and the history, academic history, not uh, Islamophobic, or polemical history of Islam or Christianity. I'm talking about what academics have written on the phenomenon of witch burning 
and Inquisition and heretic burning. There are tons of books written on these topics, published by reputable Western acad uh, academic institutions. When I asked him about those two books, who published them? I can guarantee you, none of these polemical works against Islam and Muslims have been published by any reputable Western academic institution, such as Cambridge, Oxford, Columbia, Pennsylvania, and the list goes on. So the reason why he will always, without a break, rely on polemical, Islamophobic, biased, prejudiced sources is because he cannot find support in Western academic sources on these issues, these topics. Every single source, without an exception, without an exception, I mentioned was published by a reputable institution, by recognized, established historians who are neither polemicists nor bigots. Every single source he mentioned are either polemicists or a bunch of bigots like Robert Spencer and the other uh, sources he mentioned. Christian missionaries like him can never be objective when dealing with Muslim history and Muslim civilization because they can't see anything good and they can't see anything bad about their own history. When, do, when we do a comparison between the Muslim civilization and the so-called Christendom or Christian civilization, you will see a, a huge difference in treatment towards the other. Even the most hostile academics like Bernard Lewis, who was a Zionist by confession, who advised George Bush to invade Iraq, he was a historian, recognized historian. Even he goes as far as to say that the Muslims, when they were in power, they treated the Jews with utmost kindness and generosity. Even you, you can see him lecturing on this topic. Go and Google his name, Bernard Lewis, Muslims and Jews. You will see the lectures and see what he has to say. Why can Bob not recognize that? You know why? It is just a, he's, he's caught the disease. The disease ISIS has caught. All this is darkness and hatred in history, in theology, in literature. They cannot see any beauty. They cannot see any coexistence. They cannot see any compassion between Muslims, Jews, and Christians. All this is hate and darkness. Islam has to be evil. Even though there are good things about Islam, Islamic civilization lasted for over a thousand years. The oldest churches in the world are in the Muslim world, right? What did the Christians do when they came to power? And if I heard him correctly, did he say Western imperialism is to be celebrated? Is that what he said? No, you misheard. Oh, I have misheard. Okay, so I'm not going to comment on that. But even if he didn't say that, Western imperialism, which was primarily Christian, because with imperialism came Christian missionaries. They went to Africa, they went to India, and as irrational as that faith is, people rejected it. Even though imperialism was um, in power, right? Western, the most, he talked about slavery. It is in the Bible. Paul, and he's a Christian, I know, he's wearing a cross there. And he's got, got, a that, with it? He's got an idol on the, on the cross. problem well. with my cross? Okay. I do, yeah, yeah, I do. It's, it, there you go. It's idol worship. Islamic supremacism. Okay. He has a problem with my cross. Okay. So, Islamic supremacism. I, I, he has a problem uh, with my cross. By Shut the way, up the Muslims. By, by the way, by Islamic the way. supremacism. Okay, okay. Can, I, can I continue? By the way, I'm not an Islamic supremacist. I am a coexistence supremacist. I want humans to coexist. I believe Islam as a faith and as a civilization had the most beautiful period of coexistence in human history. And the only other example we have in human history is modern West, where Muslims, Jews and Christians coexist harmoniously. That's beautiful. That's to be cherished. We as Muslims, we acknowledge virtue where it exists. And it is not because of Christianity where we have coexistence. It is because of liberalism. Liberalism and secularism is not necessarily Christian, right? Modern phenomenon called Western civilization and the coexistence we, coexistence we find therein is not because of Christianity. In fact, when we look at the Christian civilization, 19th century backwards, what we see is persecution, 
where we see violence against the Jews and Muslims. The Jewish people were facing extinction. He will never comment on that. I wonder why. I wonder why. He will never talk about how Jews were driven out of Britain in the 13th century, and then from France, and then from Spain. Where were the Jews running to? Where were they going? North Africa, Muslim North Africa, Muslim Middle East, Muslim Ottoman lands, and they flourished. They became businessmen, they became the top scholars, poets. The golden age of the House of Israel was in Al-Andalus. Again, I will quote another academic source, the history of Sephardic and Mitzrahi Jewry, who is the author Zain Zohar a Jewish scholar on page eight and nine. Page eight and nine of his book states that when the Muslims arrived in Spain, Al-Andalus, the Jews opened the gates of castles and fortresses to welcome the Muslims as liberators. Liberators from who? Liberty from who? From Christians who were governing Spain. Why were the Jews so happy about Muslim arrival? according to Zion Zohar, not a Muslim apologist, not a Muslim apologist. And up to this moment, I stand by my standard of not quoting one Muslim source to support my arguments, not one Muslim source. I have been quoting nonstop academic Western scholarship and sources, not one Muslim source. I will not quote a Muslim source because there are people out there and in here who will say Muslim apologists, biased, prejudiced. No, I will, I will insist. I will, and why are these Western academics praising Muslim civilization? Another book, another book, a very important book, although quite old, published in 1913. The book is titled Preaching of Islam, written, authored by Professor Thomas Walker Arnold. What's his name? Thomas Walker Arnold, not a Muslim, a philosopher who taught at SOAS, School of Oriental and African Studies. He published a book in 1913 called Preaching of Islam. Anyone who reads that book once in your lifetime will never walk away with the same conclusions ISIS and these Christian missionaries have on Islam. This is why I keep insisting that ISIS and Christian missionary, missionaries like Bob are brothers in one faith. What is their faith? They see darkness in Islam. They see hatred in Islam. They see division and unpleasant history in Islam. What we as Muslims and objective Christians and object, objective Jews see in Islam is a thousand years of civilization where Jews and Christians coexisted. Now he mentioned to make my final point again, I want to stick to academic sources. And amazingly, by the grace of Allah, all of these points he mentioned, or he made, I have something to offer in return as my rebuttal. And I will not speak from my mind from my opinion, I will give you academic sources to go and consult. He mentioned martyrs of Cordoba. Remember that? You remember that martyrs of Cordoba? Who were the martyrs of Cordoba? Very good question. And why did he mention them as a case of persecution? Now, Muslims governed parts of Spain for over seven centuries. And he came up with one case, martyrs of Cordoba, Christians being persecuted by Muslims. And he cannot find any other case. And we will see if he brings something, up, uh, something else up. And I still want him to answer my two questions. Martyrs of Cordoba, who were they? These were a bunch of extremist Christians who saw who saw Christians in Spain converting to Islam in drives, in their thousands, Christians voluntarily converting to Islam in drives, to an extent that one of the sympathizers of Martyrs of Cordoba called Paul Alvarez writes in 850s in Cordoba that Christian youngsters are reading Muslim books. They are inspired by Muslim philosophy they are reading the Arabic language, they are studying the Arabic, and they can form better poetry in Arabic than the Arabs can. And because of that, many of them are going to their faith. 
because they are deeply inspired by Muslim philosophy, Muslim scholarship, Muslim civilization in general. So the point he was making was that Christian youngsters, they are being influenced by Islamic civilization and they are voluntarily accepting Islam. So the response was, I'm finishing right now. This is my last point. The response was martyrs of Cordoba. Who are these people? They were a bunch of Christian extremists. What they would do is okay, they would go reply? to the, you, you, you have to be patient because I was completely mean, silent for all that time he was speaking. Now, let me finish my last point and you can come back in. Martyrs of Cordoba were a group of people, Christian extremists or Christian ISIS who got together in Spain and they said, how do we turn the tide of conversion of Christians? What do we do? We cannot possibly, you know, convince these Christian youth um, or prevent them from uh, becoming Muslims. What do we do? So they came up with an idea. The idea was to do something so severe, so hostile and so extreme that the Muslim state in Spain is forced to persecute us. And we will use that persecution to gain sympathy from Christians. And because of that extreme sympathy, Christians will stop becoming Muslims. So what was the idea? We will insult Muhammad in public places. We will go and insult Muhammad. We will curse Muhammad. So they started doing it. They went to the Muslim courts okay, in front of the judge. They I insulted reply. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, but the majority, of course you can. Let me finish. Well, you, Let you, me finish. Keep going of course, on. I'm finishing. I'm finishing. It's very why important. To, well, wait, 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 wait. I didn't do that. Well, I didn't do that. Hurry you up. could continue for another 10 minutes because you ran out of substance. It's not my fault. No, no. If you have nothing more to say, it's not my fault. I have a lot to say, okay, but I will stop. This is my last last point. You said that. So martyrs of Cordoba. I get what you said. So these people in 1850, from the year 850, to 859, close to 49 people or 50 people were executed by the Muslim courts for insulting the Prophet of Islam, despite the fact that Muslim judges would give them time to recant. Stop it. Don't do it. Christians of Cordoba and Christians of Spain collectively condemned this behavior. They said these extremists have nothing to do with us. We are living happily. We have no problems in Spain. Okay, these are troublemakers. Okay, I'm finishing. You if you that. want to read an objective book, an objective book on this topic, then there is a book I will recommend authored by Jessica A. Coop. Jessica A. Coop, and the book is titled Martyrs of Cordoba and is published by Nebraska University Press. So, Nebraska. I'll now. okay, again, an I'll academic reply. source. Note so, an academic source. So, you will Adnan, see the lies Adnan, of these missionaries. Adnan, Respond to my Adnan points. Adnan said, Do you remember earlier in his nice monologue? He said Monologue. that no reputable publisher would publish any of the books that I mentioned. They were all written by Islamophobes and they would not be published by any reputable publisher. Yes. That's what he said. Yes. He lied to you. Okay. The 30-year genocide, Turkey's destruction of its Christian minorities, 1894 to 1924 was published by Harvard University Press. Okay. Is that reputable? Of course it is. Wait, let me check. No, no, don't interrupt. I won't interrupt. Right, so. If that's the case, I start Don't interrupt, I start Adnan. You lied to the people because you're not a historian, you're an apologist. What's the title of the book? No, I'm going to continue speaking. What's the. Listen. So. He talked about the martyrs of Cordoba. He said that these were extremists. They were insulting Muhammad. And that's why they were killed. So, what he doesn't tell you is that some of the martyrs of Cordoba were actually invited to give their opinion about Muhammad by Muslims under the promise of protection, under the promise that nothing would happen to them. And so they did give their opinion. And then the next day, the same Muslims went and took them to the authorities to be killed. That's actually what happened. But he didn't tell you that. What he didn't tell you is the movement of the martyrs of Cordoba was successful. Not only did it stop the movement of conversions to Islam, but in some cases, it actually reversed it. 
some of the martyrs of Cordoba were Christians who became Muslims, who were inspired by the martyrs of Cordoba and became Christians again and were killed. But he didn't tell you that. And how was the martyr of Cordoba stopped? This is what happened. The ruling authorities said to the bishops, you either stop this or we wipe out your entire population and we enslave you, every one of you, man, woman and child. That's what happened. But he didn't tell you that either. Repeat that, sorry. He didn't tell you that either. Repeat that, please. Stop interrupting, Adnan. Now, why did he tell you that? Because Adnan is not a historian. Adnan is an apologist. He wants to characterize anyone who tells a history that portrays Islam in an unfavorable light as an Islamophobe. The reality is, go and speak to the Spanish Christians about what they suffered in Spain. Here's some examples. If a Christian was killed, the blood money required for their death was half that required for the murder of a Muslim. Source. Furthermore, Source. the one I quoted earlier, stop interrupting. Read it. Stop interrupting, Adnan. Notice, now that he is stung by historical fact, he can't control himself. Suddenly, he has to interrupt because facts burn you, Adnan. Facts burn. Read, read. So, read it. What happened? What happened? Read it. Was that Muslims, as they occupied and dominated the Iberian Peninsula, said that Christian men could not marry Muslim women. But Muslim men could marry Christian women. Is that fair treatment? No. It's still true today. Muslims still practice this, even now. Muslims commanded the churches could not ring their bells. If you think I'm lying, go away and do your research. Adnan is lying. Adnan is lying. Those, control yourself, Adnan. I'm not talking. Those, those that try to characterize the martyrs of Cordoba as extremists, or those of us that simply tell the church's historical experience of being dominated by Islam as Islamophobes are lying to you because they find the history embarrassing. If you watch this video again on content over everything, all the way through, write down how many historical books I gave as my evidence. Please do. They're not all Islamophobes. He wants to characterize them as all Islamophobes. So every Greek historian, every Romanian historian, Every Serbian historian, every Croatian historian, every Spanish historian, every Albanian Christian historian that portrays the Islamic Caliphate as unjust, unfair, cruel, savage, and a brutal occupying force, Adnan dismisses them all, winning it with an emotive phrase. Islamophobe. Why does he do that? Because his argument he knows fails when you go away and research it. So he's hoping to clinch the argument with emotions, not facts. He wants to slur me and those who simply talk about 
Christian history from a Christian perspective. Because in his supremacist worldview, this apologist for Islamic supremacism does not believe that Christians have the right to tell their own history. He thinks that anyone who does so is guilty of a thought crime because it's fashionable, fashionable to portray critics of Islam in that way. Notice, I'm criticizing Islamic history. I'm not calling for prejudice against Muslims today. He can't show any evidence that I have. This is a debate about history. So why is he slurring anyone who disagrees with him as an Islamophobe? Because he knows when you look into it yourself, you'll realize I'm telling the truth and he is telling a lie. Now, let us be clear. The reason why I speak about this is simply because I believe as a Christian, I have the right to speak about my own history from my own sources written by my own people. If that makes me guilty of a thought crime, so be it. I don't care. I'm not going to be silenced by his motive, pejorative, emotional terms and insults. I am criticizing the Islamic Caliphate. And if you think that I'm being unfair, compare the Ottoman Caliphate to ISIS. The Ottoman Caliphate invaded lands that were not their own. ISIS invaded lands that were not their own. The Ottoman Caliphate kidnapped Christian children. ISIS kidnapped Christian children. The Ottoman Caliphate enslaved people. ISIS enslaved people. The Ottoman Caliphate imposed the jizya on Christians. ISIS imposed the jizya on Christians. The Ottomans reduced Christians to the status of dhimmis. ISIS reduced Christians to the status of dhimmis. The Ottomans confiscated Christian property like Constantinople's Hagia Sophia, having butchered every man, woman and child in the church on the day of its conquest. Something he said I had no evidence for. Go and look it up yourselves. ISIS went and confiscated Christian churches. The Ottoman Caliphate, the Ottoman Caliphate executed and threatened to execute anyone who left their version of Islam. The Ottoman Caliphate killed those who left Islam. I am not making this up. My comparison is a fair historical comparison. Now, does that mean that the next Muslim you meet in your workplace is suddenly guilty of being a terrorist supporting ISIS sympathizer? Absolutely not. No, not at all. But what it does mean is that we have a historical testimony of how Muslims through history have believed that Islam should be interpreted and applied that contradicts the narrative that we have been given by the liberal media today and by apologists for Islamic supremacism like Adnan Rashid, a man who has, according to many, and I've heard the video, attended meetings 
by Islamic supremacists and ISIS supporters, his voice can be heard in the tapes. He says that they were made up. I've seen the video myself. The voice that I hear in those recordings sounds exactly like Adnan's does. So, just be aware of what kind of apologist is making the argument today. Now, what should we do? We should tell the truth. That's all I'm asking for. Tell the truth and accept the reality that whether you look at the caliphate in Spain or the Ottoman caliphate, the Christians have suffered persecution at the hands of Sharia law and Muslims who apply Sharia law. It's not wrong of me to state that fact. It's not wrong of me to tell a history rooted in our own experience as a people. Adnan wants to villainize that because it tells an uncomfortable truth about Islam. And my question to all of you Muslims and to all of you liberals, if my facts make you feel uncomfortable, perhaps your conscience is telling you you need a better religion. Because over a thousand years of Islamic history contradicts this apologist. You think I'm lying, Adnan. Go and speak. And I ask this of all of you. Go and speak to the Assyrian Christians. You go. can find go, go, them. Go. Yes, go. 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 Go, go please. Go. Be quiet, Adnan. Go. Go. Go and speak. Go, man. Adnan, be quiet. Okay. Go. Get lost, guys. Go. <laughs> go and speak to the Assyrian Christians. Yeah, don't read history, but go and speak to them. Yes. <laughs> it doesn't want you to speak to them. Notice the interruptions. So. Go and speak to them. Let them tell you their history. If I am lying, they'll tell you I'm lying. If I'm telling you the truth, they will be able to provide their own sources, their own material, and their own evidence. You can find Assyrian Christians in London. Go to their churches and talk to them. Go and speak to the Coptic Christians of Egypt. You can find their churches in London. Go and speak to them. You can find Greek Christians in London. Go to their churches and speak to them. If I am lying, they will surely tell you I am lying. But if, when you investigate, you find that I'm telling the truth, then see Adnan for what he is, an apologist for supremacism. And if you have to apologize for supremacism because it's facts make you uncomfortable, then I say to all of you Muslims and to all of you liberals, change the way you're thinking. Change your beliefs. Adnan asked me two questions because he wanted to get off. He wanted to get off the topic as quickly as he could. The witch trials, absolute fact, we did horrendous things, horrendous. But what he didn't tell you, what he didn't tell you, is that it was a localized experience, particularly in France and Austria and southern Germany. Localized. Localized. Local. What he didn't tell Four you. Countries were localized. Stop interrupting. Stop interrupting, Adnan. What he didn't tell you is that there was zero phenomena of witch burning in Eastern Orthodox Christianity. What he didn't tell you when he mentioned the Spanish Inquisition was that the Spanish Inquisition, unlike local secular courts and unlike the courts of the local church, was actually conducted by trained lawyers who never once convicted people of witchcraft. Not once. Zero. Why? Because the Spanish Inquisition 
was conducted not by superstitious laity, but by trained university lawyers who bequeathed to Europe the idea of using evidence in court. Just an example, the Spanish Inquisition, in comparison to other courts at the time, were by far the fairest courts in the land. By far the fairest. They fall greatly short of what we would consider fair today. I don't deny it. But relatively speaking, they were far superior to the superstitious and ill-trained courts that you can compare them to. The Spanish Inquisition treat its prisoners with dignity. There are examples of prisoners in Spanish jails deliberately blaspheming so that they can be transferred to the prisons of the Inquisition because the Inquisition treat its prisoners with more dignity. Let me tell you what Spanish historians say about the lies that Adnan wants to feed. They call it the black legend. That's what they describe it as. The black legend, a slur against Spanish Christianity, a slur against Spanish identity. And I'll tell you who propagated those lies. It was a man, a pseudonym writer, called Montanus, writing at the time of the Reformation, who give us this depiction of the Spanish Inquisition as being some horrible, tyrannical movement. Historians today who have collected the case files of the Spanish Inquisition and the Spanish Inquisition was by far the most well-documented, the most well-documented legal proceedings of Spain at the time have demonstrated I want that everyone to stay to listen to my response to that this. our common perception of the Spanish Inquisition the chain ball, the chain ball. Stop interrupting Adnan. Stop interrupting He's Adnan. He's not gonna hear it coming. Notice the Spanish Inquisition. Notice the interruptions by the Muslims. Stop crying. Notice, about this. notice, on. notice. Because I'm going after this. No, no, you're gonna hear my response. No, I'm gonna go. You're gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go. You can't do that. You can you, you have to hear my response and then go. Then we can shake hands. As gentlemen, and you walk away. Right? The Spanish Inquisition. As Bob is not a gentleman, he's going to do the Spanish a, Inquisition. The Spanish Inquisition. Yes, by our standards today, would fall well short of everything we consider decent or fair. But the claims about the Spanish Inquisition are grossly exaggerated, and it is used as a slur, and it is based on inaccuracies published by reformers during the Reformation 400 years later. Now, ladies and gentlemen, most of you were probably not here at the very beginning. But at the very beginning, I was actually trying to leave the park. I've stayed for over an hour. The second question, the Muslim treatment of Jews and Christians. So, second question, yeah, I nothing. Will do. I will do. Yeah. So I've stayed for over an hour because Adnan demanded this debate and I have given him a debate. I'm going to answer his second question and then I am going to leave. Stay for five minutes and go. So. Stay for five minutes and go. I'll give you five minutes and then I'll go. Yeah. So, in terms of did Muslims do good things to Christians when they ruled them? I can say hand on heart, absolutely it is a fact that they did. Accidentally? Abs no, and deliberately so. No. You Hold can, on one second. You can Hold one Jews. second. Jews Stop Jews interrupting. Okay. Notice the interruptions again. All the time. Notice the interruption. So, notice the interruption. Notice the interruption. That's why I don't want to. All the time. So, the fact that good things were done, and I don't deny it, and that those good things were done deliberately, does not 
outweigh the grievous criminal acts done against Christians also deliberately. The good Muslim, bad Muslim argument, it sounds good when you trip off the tongue. However, so what happened to ISIS 1400 years, ISIS Ottoman, 1400 years, 1400 years of consistent Islamic practice demonstrate that Muslims have consistently believed that their discrimination and persecution of Christians is in some way Islamic and it is not wrong for me to demonstrate that point or to speak about my history as a Christian. I am not an Islamophobe for saying so. I am simply a Christian talking about Christian history from a Christian perspective. And it isn't just me that's speaking. It is countless thousands and tens of thousands and millions of Christians who will tell you the same history because their historians remember it, but for very long. our churches remember it, and our culture remembers it in song and poem and writings and history. So, okay, five Biden. minutes I gave you. Now, first of all, let me start with uh, Bob's methodology in research, right? Every time he makes a point, he goes, go and talk to the Armenians, go and talk to the Greeks, Go and talk to the Germans. Yes, do Go and so. talk to the English. Don't speak I can to say the Don't same speak. thing. If I want to make an argument, if I came back and uh, every time I made a point, I would say, go and go talk and to go. the Moroccans. Go and talk to the Algerians. Go and talk to the Egyptians, Libyans, Tunisians, Pakistanis, Saudis, Yemenis. Likewise, likewise, brother, it's a debate. So, 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 so the point, next point Bob did, Bob made was, if you want to, if you want to hear about, if you want to hear about, brother, can you, brother, can you, can you, brother, you drop, brother, you have to drink, right? We talk about Libya and other countries. Brother, just press on, be quiet. Yeah, just press on. Be quiet, please. Thank you. Okay. So if every time I made a point, instead of uh, quoting academic sources, if I said to you, go and talk to Moroccans, Algerians, and all the way up to Bangladesh, go, go and talk to every single one of them, if you want to understand history, how would the peasants or mechanics or engineers or even businessmen, will, how will they tell you about history? History is the work of historians. They will tell you history, okay? And sometimes the masses can be misled, like what's happening in India, the Hindutva, extremist Hindu right-wing government has effectively brainwashed the masses in India. And historians are screaming from the US. There is a historian called Audrey Trush, again, uh, a non-Muslim uh, American historian. She's screaming and she's one of the most hated persons in India. You know why? She's directly challenging the Indian government and their narrative on the history of India or the Muslim history of India. She's challenging them that you are lying to the masses. So it is very possible for the masses to be uh, brainwashed like what's happening to the Americans. American masses have been brainwashed. So he wants you to go and talk to the masses, not historians. I want you to go and talk to historians. Now I stand corrected. I stand corrected that the source he quoted on the genocide was indeed published by Harvard University. I have the credibility and integrity to come back and say I stand corrected, right? But what he doesn't tell you, when you read the description of the book, it states, it talks about the genocidal policy of the Turkish government from the period of Sultan Abdul Hamid II, moving on to the Young Turks, when it, it, it intensified, genocide actually intensified during the Young Turks. Young Turks were... Uh, but it started um, with the wait, Sultan. Wait, wait, wait. But it started no, with the Sultan. Mean, no interruption. No interruptions. The young Turks were a secular, anti-Islamicizing anti, anti anti group of youngsters who came to power, okay? And they were, all, they were also called Domne, okay? Domne, sorry, Domne. This group was called Domne. They were secular, they were secular Turks who were against Islam and Islamic ruling of the Ottoman Empire. They were the ones who intensified the genocide. If if they were directly responsible. Intensified uh, wait, the genocide. Okay, look, of the common Sultan. decency, common decency, minutes. common decency. I was completely silent. I was telling people to be silent. And I was, so Bernard Lewis, on the other hand, I mentioned earlier, disagrees. Academics, they always argue with sources. 
Some have one opinion, the others have another opinion. Bernard Lewis, who is also a Jewish historian, who believes that it was not the Turkish government, even Young Turks were not behind it. But even if they were, we're not responsible for them. Young Turks were secular. They were more inspired by Western thought than they were by Islamic thought. Why? Because they came to power to de-Islamicize Turkey. And they're the ones who committed the genocide. So you cannot put that genocide in the basket of Islam, put it in the basket of secularism. Okay? And you talked about genocides. And there are genocides taking place today against the Muslims. Iraq war. Three million Muslims have been killed in Iraq alone since the, uh, the First World War. And there were Christian priests blessing their soldiers, American soldiers. George Bush, self-confessing Christian, said, God has commanded me to wage this crusade against the Iraqi people. You can't wash your hands. And he talked about witch burning and they were not done by Eastern Orthodox Church. And then they, he went on to defending Inquisition. Imagine, brothers and sisters, imagine. Today, if standing here, I started defending ISIS. God forbid, Allah forbid, if I started doing that, what would you think of me? Tell me honestly, what would you think of me? I'm talking to the crowd. What would you think of me? This guy is either mad or he is an extremist who needs to be in jail. Crazy. Do you agree? Crazy. Do you agree? Crazy. Wait, wait, wait. It's my turn. It's my turn. I abhor groups like ISIS. I call them Khawarij. Okay. And these Islamophobes, previously I had some respect for Bob. But the moment he mentioned the notion that I was supporting extremism, okay, I have lost all respect. No respect anymore. No mercy. Five he is he's a liar. He's a liar. You can go. You can go. You can go. Your no, away. I don't want to shake your hand. Now notice. Don't run away. No, no, no. no. It's my, I'm still speaking. I'm still just speaking. Just go. Just go. Just go. Over just go. An hour. Just go. Trying it's trying my turn to speak. It's my turn to speak. It's my turn to speak. And the supreme. You can remain silent all that time. Okay. You can. You can. You can. You can remain silent. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, you said you were going to go. Okay. And let me finish and then you can go. Ladies oh, you can talk. Gentlemen. Let me finish, you can talk. Ladies and let gentlemen. Let me finish and then you can talk. The telling word. Okay. The telling word was that the genocide of the Syrian Christians was you said you were going to go. Under the Sultan, the Prophet of 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 the Okay, let him talk. 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 Let I told you an apology for supremacy. I did not say today. that you were no, no, not talk, talk, talk. Okay, okay. ladies and gentlemen, so get it. I will continue with my responses. Talk, talk. Now, Coward. you see, He's going the, down. the reason, the reason why, the reason why people like this, the reason why people like this, there are two types of people who want to see darkness in Islam and Islamic history. Two types of people, ISIS and Islamophobes. Islamophobe includes atheistic extremists like um, Sam Harris, Richard Dawkins, people like that. They're extremists. And even atheists will testify to the fact that they are extremists, right? Like we have Christian missionaries, not all of them, some of them, and you saw one example, these people are extremists. They cannot have any decent discussion with you, right? It's, 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 it's very, very difficult to have a proper discussion with them. Okay. And what do you call a decent discussion? A decent discussion is where you actually quote academic sources, objective sources, not apolog apologetic sources. Every single source I quoted was an academic source. Okay. 
he made many points and I rebutted them successfully by quoting reputable academic sources. So coming back to Inquisition, did you notice something? He started to glorify Inquisition. It is no different to glorifying ISIS. In fact, I'll go as far as to say Inquisition was far more evil than ISIS is. Inquisition, if you study an objective history, on, in, this is the madness I cannot believe in these people. It is madness to defend an institution like Inquisition that killed hundreds of thousands of people by torturing them to death. Torture! Inquisition was known for torture. He said Inquisition was a very organized institution. There were qualified judges sitting over these trials. It was recorded diligently. Oh my God. And that's the reason why we know about Inquisition. Because the records were kept diligently. And when you go and study some objective scholars on Inquisition, not Muslim apologists again, he kept calling me a Muslim apologist. Why am I a Muslim apologist when I'm giving uh, Western sources to you to go and look into? If I said, go and study Ibn Kathir, go and study Muhammad Ali Salabi, or go and study Adnan Rashid, then I would be an apologist, no doubt. I'm not asking you to do that. Go and study Western academic sources on these issues, and you will see, even the book he mentioned on genocide will highlight the fact that it were Young Turks, a secular group, and then later on Ataturk, who de-Islamicized or de-Islamified Turkey. If Ataturk commits a crime, a man who came to de-Islamify Turkey, why, why do you accuse Muslims of his crimes? Is the question. Or Young Turks. So even their own books they quote, he hasn't read one of them. Even every single book he mentioned, he hasn't read any of them. And the ones I mentioned, by the grace of God, I have read most of them. Okay. So Inquisition, if you want to read about Inquisition, pick up the works of Henry Charles Lee. What is the name? Henry Charles, Henry Charles Lee, who is an authority on Inquisition. In his works, he discusses what happened to the Muslims after the Catholic monarchs came to power, what Inquisition did to Moriscos. Moriscos were remaining Muslims after the Catholic takeover of Spain. He talks about the, the doings of Inquisition in Spanish dependencies and he talks about Inquisition in general. He got the documents from Europe, he was in America, he wrote this history and that was the achievement of his life. Henry Charles Lee, an authority on Inquisition. When you read his works and after you listen to people like Bob, you will have two thoughts in mind. Either Bob is no different to ISIS, people we abhor, Okay, or he's mad, or he's mad, wait, 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 he's mad, or he's mad. You cannot possibly in your right mind defend Inquisition. It was Inquisition that burnt William Tyndale at stake. You know, William Tyndale was one of the first translators of the Bible in the, into the English language. You know, again, he kept saying, if you don't believe me, go and check. Go and check what? Go and check what? He kept saying, go and speak to these people or that people. That means you have nothing to say. You have no substance. You have no sources to back your opinions. So Henry Charles Lee is the man to read on Inquisition and you will see what I'm talking about. Okay. So the final point before I came to this was, uh, there was a final point I was mentioning. Um, I forgot. Yes. William Tyndale. Who was William Tyndale? William Tyndale was a man who translated the New Testament from Greek into English. In the time of Henry VIII, the Tudor king who governed Britain. And he was on the run. Why? What was his crime? He translated the Bible into the English language, the New Testament in particular. Who caught up with him? The Inquisition. They caught up with him. He was caught and then he was burnt alive at stake with his translations. They threw his translations into the fire to burn him. There are many examples, hundreds of examples where Inquisition was responsible for burning people alive. This guy, either, either witches as well. Okay, but I'm talking about heretics. Inquisition was particularly known for burning heretics alive. 
And who were the heretics people like William Tyndale, a scholar? He was a scholar par excellence. He was burnt at stake. People like Miguel Savito, Michael Savitas, who wrote a book in 1553, he was burnt alive in Geneva. Not directly by Inquisition, but Inquisition was looking for him. He was burnt by John Calvin in Geneva. So the list goes on and on and on. The final point I want to make before I finish is that some of these Christian missionaries, some, not all, I have met lovely Christians around the world, loving people. I've been to the homes. I went to the US. I had a debate with James White and I met lovely Christians. They came, they shook my hands. They appreciated what I did. They were very, very compassionate people. They are not represented by these people, people like Bob and other Islamophobes you see in the park. They are just like those so-called martyrs of Cordoba. These people are extremists. And all they want to do is spread hate against Muslims. That's all the job is. They will not come and preach the gospel. They will not talk about the love of Christianity, the compassion of Christianity. They will talk about hatred against Islam. Okay. And then say, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to spread hatred against Muslims. But how can you spread hate against the seed and not hate, hate the fruit? How is it possible to break the seed from the fruit? You cannot hate the seed or a tree and not hate the fruit. It's, that's not possible. So you make people hate Islam, okay, unjustly, okay, in a way that's biased and prejudiced. And then the outcome is hatred against Muslims. And that's when attacks like Christchurch attack and other attacks take place. So thank you very much for listening to me. There's a lot we can talk about. My voice is gone. It was a long discussion, a very difficult discussion with someone like that. But I had to keep patient. Thank you so much for listening. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Those of you who are listening, please keep in mind that we have no agenda to lie to people. We're not here to misrepresent facts. The sources I mentioned, I request from every single viewer out there, go and read those books. I want you to read those books. Once you have read, once you've read about, I think I've met, I must have mentioned 10 books or maybe 15 books at max, right? Go and read them and then you will see light. Let me see what I'm talking about. Start with Professor Thomas Arnold's preaching of Islam. Preaching of Islam and you will see what Islam did to the world. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi 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 wa rah